Hey everyone, welcome back to Virtualization How-To, and I'm Brandon Lee. Today we're diving into a very interesting addition to the Minis Forum lineup, the MSA1 Mini Workstation. If you're like me and were excited about the MS01, you may have said to yourself, what if we had an MS01 except with an AMD Ryzen-based processor? Well, that is exactly what the MSA1 is. But as always, the devil is in the detail. So let's unpack what the Minis Forum MSA1 brings to the table as a potential home server. Now a word about the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Nakivo. Are you looking for a powerful and reliable backup solution for your home lab or enterprise environment? Look no further than Nakivo Backup and Replication. Nakivo is an excellent data protection software that offers comprehensive backup and recovery options and lets you use your NAS or a simple VM deployment as a backup appliance. Nakivo supports a wide range of environments, including Proxmox VE, VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix, KVM, and EC2 instances, along with SaaS platforms like Microsoft 365. Plus, they offer a free version for up to 10 VMs, and that makes it an ideal choice for both home lab setups and enterprise backups. Let's first start with the hardware. The MSA1 packs some respectable hardware specs. It comes with the AMD Ryzen 7 8700G processor, which offers 16 threads of processing power, and this is also notably a uniform processor architecture. And I'm a big fan of uniform processor architecture, especially Xeons, as well as the AMD Ryzen processors, especially when we compare that to the Intel hybrid cores. Now, what I mean by the Intel hybrid architecture is this is an Intel, at least at this point, consumer architecture with the performance cores and the efficiency cores. Now, hybrid cores work. They just make you jump through more hoops when running hypervisors. And also, I don't like the uncertainties of running workloads across dissimilar processor cores and speed. So even if Proxmox can handle hybrid architecture and VMware vSphere with the boot parameter that we can use can handle hybrid architecture, there's still the dissimilar processor cores and speeds. So the MSA1, the AMD Ryzen 8700G processor, is a uniform processor. Now it's a fairly new processor as well. It was released in Q1 of 2024. So with this unit, you're getting a very recent processor. Now you compare that with the Minis Forum MS01 and its Core i9 13900H processor that was released in Q1 of 2023, so a whole year newer processor in the MSA1. Now comparing the two processors, the AMD Ryzen 7 8700G processor is a desktop processor that has a base clock speed of 4.2 gigahertz, and it also has a turbo speed of up to 5.1 gigahertz. That is eight cores and 16 threads. Now it also has a single thread rating of 3929 and an overall CPU mark of 31724, at least with the number of samples that is currently out on their website. Now, when you compare that with the i9-13900H processor, that is 1.9% faster in single thread performance. And the overall CPU score is 8.8% faster than the i9-13900H's 28,935 CPU score. Now, another really great feature of the MSA1 is the four, yes, four M.2 PCIe NVMe slots. Now that offers fantastic expansion options for storage, especially with virtualization and even thinking about VMware's new NVMe memory tiering, which we'll get to that in just a moment. Now let's talk about design. At first glance, the MSA1 looks almost identical to the MS01, especially from the front. However, there are significant differences when you look at a few things like accessing the internals. With the MS01, you had the two Coolest clamp style lever that was super convenient. You just clamp it down and pull out the internals. But with the A1, Minis Forum has taken a step back, in my opinion. You need to remove six screws from the bottom, and it's not a deal breaker, but it's it's definitely less than convenient, especially if you're one that really likes to tinker and you want to install things take out drives, put in drives, what have you, that is going to be a little bit of a challenge compared to the O1. Now here's where things take a turn for obviously the worse with this unit. 
networking. If you're hoping for the same networking options as the O1, one you're in for a letdown. The MSA1 comes with only two 2.5 gig network adapters, and they're Realtek adapters, not Intel. So that means no native support for VMware vSphere. And that's a huge drawback for anyone wanting to run VMware ESXi. Now you can use the USB network adapter as I did in my home lab and get ESXi up and running easily. However, just note that you're not gonna be able to use those native network adapters. And it's just one more thing to have to worry about with this unit. Now onto a brighter note. If you saw my previous video with VMware NVMe memory tiering, I was actually using the Minisforum MS a1. Memory tiering with VMware ESXi 8.0 Update 3 can literally extend your physical memory by up to 400% by using an NVMe drive. Now I tested this out with MSA1 and with 96 gigs of physical memory, I was able to push it to a staggering 468 gigabytes of memory. So almost half a terabyte of RAM in this tiny mini PC. And I think this is going to be a game changer for anyone running heavy heavy workloads, multiple virtual machines, and just really maxing out in density what you can fit on this little home lab server. And one thing that's also really cool about the MSA1 is the fact that it has an OcuLink expansion port on the back. Now, if you haven't heard about OcuLink, it is primarily for external discrete GPU configurations. So while this unit doesn't have an internal PCIe slot like the MS01, it does have the OcuLink that the MS01 does not have. So that is kind of a give and take between the two. I still think I prefer the internal PCIe slot of the MS01 compared to the Oculink, but do note that it is an option. Power consumption is always a concern in home labs as well. During boot, the MSA1 spiked up just a little bit, but it settled down and idle power consumption was decent at around 25 watts. Now, when I ran a VD bench, storage benchmark on the unit pushing the CPUs to 100%, I did see the unit climb to around 75 watts during the VD bench storage benchmark test. But that is very respectable, especially for the performance of the CPU. So guys, I wanted to take you physically in a walkthrough of the MSA1. As you can tell, this thing looks identical to the MS01. If I had it, if I had them side by side, you really can't tell from the front bezel if you're looking at an MS01 compared to an MSA1. However, when you flip the unit around to the back, this is where you can tell the difference. So we've got the two Realtek 2.5 gig network adapters, we've got a display port, we've got an HDMI port, we've got a 40 gig USB C port, we've got a couple of USB A ports, 3.0 and 2X, and we've also got the Oculink port that we described for external discrete GPU configurations. Then of course we've got the power adapter. So this thing is really, really beefy. Uh, just holding it in my hands, I mean, it feels like a substantial piece of hardware, which I really, really like. Got the metal cover, uh, everything feels very, very substantial, well built. The fit and finish of the unit is just like I would expect from any forum and uh, really nice, uh, just like the MS01 was. Now, I wanted to show you guys just after I took the six screws out of the bottom and the internals of the unit. So that exposes, once you take the six screws out, you take the bezel off for the uh, front bezel, you take that off, and then all of the internals, the tray just slide out. Now, again, I think that's a lot less convenient than the MS01, but just note that uh, it may not be a big deal to too many, but just something to uh, note as a difference between the MS01 and MSA1. You've got tons of NVMe. If you can tell, we've got a, a M.2 slot here. We've also got the connection for the U.2 tray that you also get with the MSA1. And just a note, just like the MS01, you do have a dip switch that you need to flip if you want to use the U.2 or the NVMe M.2 slot. So you have to choose correctly between that and be sure to choose correctly because you will damage an M.2 NVMe drive if you have it flipped over to the U.2 setting. And underneath the heatsink on the other side, you've got system memory here as well as two M.2 slots that are also under this heatsink. Now, one thing I didn't like 
was on the M.2 drives that are located here underneath this heat sink that also uh, covers the RAM on this side. The two M.2 slots here are actually tensioned down with this heat sink. So you know how normally on an M.2 slot you have the screw that after you put it into the slot, it tensions down and locks it in place. Well, you don't really have the screw that does that individually outside of this heat sink. You have to use the screws that go through the heat sink. So when you're trying to get the heat sink on, your M.2 drives are sticking up reverse of one another. So you have to be careful when you put the heat sink down and then thread the screws through. Just a little bit of a gripe there on those two NVMe slots that are located under the heat sink. However, you also have the uh, M.2 slot here on the other side, and then you also have the M.2 slot here that also goes along with the U.2 expansion uh, plate that you can install that comes with the unit. Now, what's a verdict? Well, the Minisform MSA1 is powerful, especially with the Ryzen processor, DDR5 memory, four NVMe slots, and that will really get you a lot of processing power and options for storage and virtualization. And I think that is a great couple of features with this unit. However, the networking aspect of the MSA1 is less than desirable. The two Realtek 2.5 gig network adapters to me is almost a deal breaker with this unit compared to the MS01, which has the two 10 gig adapters and 2.5 gig adapters and their Intel, which work on VMware ESXi or Proxmox. So it just gives you way more options for your money depending on what you want to run but it allows you to make that decision or even change your mind down the road on which hypervisor you're running on the unit so in my humble opinion the msa1 is more suited for a proxmox only environment if you want a great proxmox server with an amd ryzen processor that is an am5 generation cpu uh, this is a great unit and it has tons of storage. It's really good hardware. Uh, you've got the horsepower of the 8700G, but it also has a disappointment on the networking side. In my opinion, even with Proxmox, you still only have the two, two and a half gig Realtek network adapters. Is the Ryzen 7 8700G processor an option that you're willing to spend the money on the A1 compared to the MS01. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this review helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more home lab content and just cool stuff that we cover on this channel. Well, thanks for watching. Keep on home labbing, stay safe out there, and I will see you on the next video.